Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Vasco, I'm a professional photographer, videographer, and hopefully you enjoyed that little sneak peek at the photos we're gonna be looking at in today's video. And as always, there'll be a blog post link in the description below. So if you wanna see these photos for yourself, you can check out the blog, check out the photos. All right, and the plan for today is we're gonna look at some before and after shots. I shot with the R5. I'm gonna show you the shots right out of camera, and then I'm gonna show you the edited shots, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I did to the shots and why I did it. And uh, yeah, I was gonna talk about what I think about the R5 as a photo camera after the video, but there's no point in doing that. Hands down, the R5 is the best. At this point in time, the best photo camera Canon has ever made. I have no problems with the photography end of the camera at all. Pictures are beautiful, they're sharp, they're crisp, they're detailed, especially if you're using an RF lens, like, wow. And by the way, in this, this uh, all the photos I'm showing you today, we shot with an EF lens. We did uh, shot them with the EF 70 to 200 f 2.8, and it was it's the older generation lens, so it's an older lens. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan for today. And if you find this kind of content useful, give it a thumbs up, we'd really appreciate it. If you wanna leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. That would uh, that'd be great too. So let's jump into the photos. All right, so for the first shot, we got the moon rising up over the horizon. I always find this kind of shot pretty cool. And of course, if you're a new photographer, you got to remember, never put the horizon right in the middle of the frame. You want to move it either to the bottom or the top to tell a little bit of a story. And here for the edit, I wanted to do something a little grungy, a little edgy, a little different. I got those like branches of the tree in the top right corner and then the trees on the left. And it has a little bit of a, a creepy vibe. And for the moon, I, I never like putting the moon in the center of the frame because I find it's it's a mysterious object. So I want to place it off center somewhere to make it look a little off, a little mysterious. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this very simple shot here. And here's the cityscape of the Toronto skyline. And the photo's not too exciting right out of the camera. You can see the foreground trees are kind of green and drab. So when I edited the photo, I made them all red because it's, it's fall time. So now there's a little more visual impact with the red. And then I kind of soften the background. So there's a little bit of a haze over the city to create a separation between the trees in the foreground and the city in the background. And then the sky goes from a nice orange to a light blue. And uh, it's a really beautiful shot. This is probably one of my favorite shots from the afternoon. All right, so when I saw this scene in real life, I was so excited to shoot it. We had these tall grasses with these fuzzy tips at the end, and they were kind of swaying in the wind, and the edges were glowing with the sunlight because it was sunset, and it was really, really a beautiful shot, but I messed it up because I wasn't too familiar with the R5 at this point, so uh, let me explain to you what I did wrong here. So the R5 has absolutely incredible dynamic range, the best I've ever used out of any camera. But the trick to using the R5 properly is you have to expose for the highlights and let your subject matter fall into the shadows because you are really, really, really able to bring the shadows up in post. It's incredible. You can shoot something that's totally dark, like a silhouette where you can't even see the face and you can bring that face right back. It's amazing. So that's where I messed up with uh, this shot. And hopefully this is a little tip to help you if you're a new R5 shooter. What attracted me to this composition were all the different elements. I tried to put that really interestingly shaped grass on the left, so it's really like dominant on the left side. Then I got that moody sky in the background. And then you have that stripe of water there, which kind of cuts the um, the ground in half. You got like the, the dark background and you got that stripe of light water and then you got the beach there. So it's like dark, light, dark and the moody sky and the grass. It's, it's a little bit all over the place, but I thought it was an interesting shot. All right, and here's another moon shot, ISO 3200 F18, trying to get a nice big depth of field so the trees are in focus and the moon's in focus. And I did the edit here and I changed the moon to like this mysterious orangey glow. And then I put that sort of like grungy, vintagey kind of edit onto the photo too. And the trees are looking kind of brown, so it's very Halloween-y, I guess. You know, I shot this in October, so Halloween's kind of on my mind. And what really attracted me to this shot here is the negative space, the shape of the sky within the trees, and then the trees reaching into the sky. I thought it was, for me anyway, it was pretty interesting. So that's why I snapped this one. And I really like this shot a lot, F32. When was the last time you shot at F32? I wanted everything in the landscape here to be in focus from the tree to the city. And there, there's a kind of like a lake in between the tree and the city. So there's uh, this big gap there. But anyway, what I really like about this shot is kind of like the juxtaposition between the straight lines and the urban kind of feel in the bottom right corner to the organic lines. So you have like organic lines along the bottom and then with that tree contrasting the straight lines of the city. And even in the sky, all the clouds, they're all straight lines. It's 
very edgy and straight, which you don't see very often. And that kind of contrasts the organic stuff happening in the bottom with the tree shape. And I, overall, I think this is a beautiful shot. I really like the mood and the feel. It's almost like a very romantic kind of idea or view of a city existing within nature. And I thought that was pretty cool. And here's more or less the same concept again, except I composed this shot without the city in it. And I was really drawn to like the big sky and then the organic kind of landscape on the bottom. And then the clouds in the sky looked like they were on fire, which was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I really like this shot too. And here we go, another moon shot at F32, ISO 3200. And what I wanted to do here was get everything in focus from the trees all the way to the moon. That's why I'm not shooting at F2.8. And I just wanted this the moon to be kind of framed by all this foliage and trees and organic stuff. And it looked pretty cool. I like the way this one turned out. And this is a cool shot to me. I really like the, the twisty branches of the sumac tree or bush or whatever it is. It's got these interesting shapes and, you know, contrasted against the sky which I warmed up in the edit it looks kind of cool so you got this nice orangey sky and then you got these really like jagged kind of shapes and edgy lines and I thought that was really cool I like this a lot so this shot I had to rescue and post I, I walked around the corner and I saw these three people looking out towards the city so I opened up the aperture to f4 and I wanted to get a shot of them looking at the city but the guy on the right started turning around so I shot the shot quickly but in doing so I didn't compose it properly you can see I cut off the people's ankles on the right side and that's that's a composition no-no so with a little creative cropping I was able to create this and uh, now we have all the lines being horizontal, we have the city defocused in the background, and the people looking out towards the city, except for the guy on the right that's just about to turn around. But uh, yeah, I like the way this shot came out in the end. It, uh, it was worth it. So this shot's kind of boring. It's just a shot of the city with a gray background, gray buildings. It's not very exciting, but with a little bit of treatment in post, boom. We change the Kelvin temperature, we warm it up, we increase the contrast, we dehaze all the lights on the, uh, the buildings and everything has a little pop and a sparkle to it. And this is a really cool cityscape. I love the way this shot turned out. This is really cool. I'm going to make this my uh, desktop background for the next little while. Definitely a win. And here we go, same thing again, except this time I zoomed into 200 millimeters to get an even closer shot of the city. And uh, yeah, I love this shot. It's just, this, you got the straight lines in the sky with those clouds and it complements the straight lines of the architecture. And then you got the warm tones of the sky and those complement the warm tones inside the buildings, those lights. And there's a lot of rhythm and pattern and continuity and it's just a really, really nice shot. I like this shot. Probably one of my favorite shots from, uh, from this afternoon shoot for sure. So yeah. Definitely another winner. And here we go, ISO 5000 f2.8 and using nothing but moonlight to expose this shot. That's pretty good, you know, it's pitch black out, nothing out but the moon, the city's pretty far, it's not creating a lot of light, and I could still get a decent exposure and get a cool shot. So, I mean, you can kind of shoot in the dark with this camera, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, awesome. Okay, to satisfy my curiosity, I had to switch lenses. I put the 35 f1.4 on the camera and we're using IBIS here shooting at 20th of a second f2.8 ISO 5000 and I just wanted to see what this exposure would look like. Not bad, not bad. If you zoom in 100%, the water's a little blurry because it's 20th of a second and the water's moving obviously, but wow. <laughs> I was pretty impressed by this. So if I want to go shoot some like silhouettes or something in the dark, I can definitely, uh, I can definitely do that in the moonlight with no lights. Now for the last photo in this video and arguably the most impressive photo. And not only just because it's got yours truly in it, you know, doing my modeling here, <laughs> working on my laptop, but this is an HDR photo shot in camera. So the camera shoots three exposures and stitches them together to create one photo and it's got a huge dynamic range. And this is how cell phones work or smartphones, right? So if you're taking a photo with your iPhone, it'll shoot a photo and it'll process it in the phone and you get this nice photo with a big dynamic range. And the R5 can do that in camera and it creates a beautiful clean image. Now keep in mind here, there are no studio lights. My face is being illuminated by a laptop screen. There's LEDs behind my monitor up on the shelf behind me and that's it for lighting. And this shot came out really clean right out of camera. And this has got me so excited. I've got so many ideas. I want to keep shooting some more HDR stuff in camera. 
and playing around with it and in my photo edit I decided to make it the darks a little darker and make it a little more moody and I really love this shot. This, this R5 is really impressive for a photography camera. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is the best photography camera Canon has ever made. So yeah, if you want one, <laughs> grab one. It's, it's definitely worth it. All right, and that's the end of this video. If you want to see these photos, check out the blog post link in the description. It'll take you to my website. You can check out these photos for yourself in uh, in photo mode instead of video mode. So uh, it might be a little more detailed for you. And uh, yeah, that's it. This video is over. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, thumbs up, thumbs up. Help that uh, that algorithm find my channel and promote this channel because I think I'm producing some good content. And if you do too, give it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, this video is over. Peace out. Thanks for watching. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. All right. Peace.